Now, in this box is five pounds. Legit, it, there's five pounds. It's, it's a real five pound note, isn't it, uh, Coots? Oh, that's what I meant, yeah. Well, okay, well, <laughs> that's the whole point of it. So, this is the, inside this box is five pounds. And if anyone can open this box, you can get it open, then you yourself can have the five pounds, okay? Does that sound like, look at your next door neighbour and go, ooh. <laughs> or don't, or don't join in, that's fine. Miserable Christians, that's okay. Right, there. There are three rules, okay? You, you can't shake it, you can't break into it, and you only get 10 seconds. We'd have to ask uh, my friend Coops to have a go. So, uh, we, we heard all about Coops. So you can get it open, the five pound is yours, okay? Ten, nine, nine eight, seven, six, six, five, four, three, two, one. Okay, right, we're gonna come back to that in a moment's time, but you see this man's face here, this man, I promise you, in about three or four minutes, will have a big smile on his face, even bigger than when he first met his, his wonderful other half, Natasha. And that's what the message of the Bible is. It says in the Bible, there's a verse that says, it is God's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. He wants to do it, he wants to give it you as a gift. And there's nothing you can do to earn it. The only way that we, we have to, to get to heaven is to receive. You don't do anything, it's a gift. Okay, so I want you to think about it. It's a gift. It works a little bit like this. Now, I, I know some of you are new here tonight, but most of you met my wife, okay? And she sat there in that chair. Now, I'm a married man. Now, looking at this man in front of you, do you think that this man has ever made his wife cry before? What do you think? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <Could> say, yeah. <laughs> okay. Let me ask you a question. Have you ever made someone on planet Earth cry before? Have you hurt someone caused pain? So if I said that I'm a sinner, and I said that you yourself are a sinner, would you be able to agree with that? Okay. See these fists here. Do you think that these fists have ever hit anyone before? What do you think? They have. You're right, they have. You see these eyes. Do you think these eyes have ever looked at anything they shouldn't have? What do you think? They have. Now ask me this question. Am I going to heaven? I am. Not because I've done anything good. You can see that right now. I'm not a good person standing in front of you. But I said this the other night. There's only two types of people that get to heaven. Perfect people and forgiven people. Now, is there anyone in this room today who's perfect? No. But every single one of us can be forgiven. Because 2,000 years ago, this man, Jesus, he left the glories of heaven. God himself came into this world, took on a body, Jesus of Nazareth. You know, they spat on him, don't you? You know, they, they beat him, they, they stripped him naked, they, they put a crown of thorns, smashed it into his skull, and they hung him on a cross. He was dying there, naked, in front of his own mother. Now, I can think of many ways I'd like to die, but that is not one of them. But you know the physical sufferings which we see on the pictures and we see in the films? That wasn't the worst bit. The worst bit, the Bible says, between the sixth and the ninth hour, darkness fell on the light. And between those three hours, Jesus cried with a loud voice, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Because in those three hours, God was pouring out all of his wrath, all of his anger, for all those bad things I've done, for all those bad things you've done, and, and he put it on Jesus. It's almost as if God the Father, he, he rolled up his sleeves, and he reached into every single person's heart, and he pulled out all of the muck, all of the grime, all of the gossip, the lust, the lies, the drunkenness, the sex outside of marriage, the hatred, and he rolled it up into a ball and he pressed it on Jesus and then he crushed Jesus for those three hours on that cross so that you could be forgiven, so that you could have eternal life. You don't do anything, you just come to Jesus and you receive it as a gift. Now, I was, I'll be honest, I was trying not to, to cry during that. That was extremely moving, Coops. It really was moving. But it moves me more because, uh, Coops knows this, my brother himself actually went to Afghanistan in 2000, I think it was 2008 and 2010. He did two, two tours of Afghanistan and he eventually became a Lance Corporal. And I was a bit naughty back then. Uh, my brother had much better clothes than I did. And when I was at college, I wanted a girlfriend, don't tell my wife this, but I wanted to look good at college. So I used to sneak into my brother's room while he's away fighting for king and country, you know, dying out there, you know, taking all of the, the bullets. And I went into his room and I used to take his clothes 
and put them on and wear them because his clothes are better than mine. But I'll tell you, every single morning when I used to do that, a thought used to cross through my mind. I wonder if today will be the day. I wonder if he'll make it today. And for those of you who've got friends and family who've been to war, you know that exact same thought. You don't know when you're just going to be so fragile that just one phone call can change your whole life. But what's amazing about my brother Tom, what's amazing about Coops, is they gave up their lives for their country. They, they were saviors, if you like, and they gave up their lives to help us, to protect us. But Jesus said this, he said, Greater love has no man than this, that he lays down his life for a friend. <clears throat> and that's what Coops did, that's what my brother did, that's what all the soldiers do, they lay down their lives for friends. But that's also what Jesus did on that cross. He laid down his life for friends because he wants you to be his friend. And today he gives you a gift of salvation. If you'll call out to him, he promises he'll save you. Just to wrap everything up, um, it's, been, it's been a great week, but I just want to wrap everything up in one story. There was once a, a young girl and she was brought up in a loving home. Her parents smothered her with love. They loved her to pieces. They couldn't have loved her enough. But for some reason she rebelled and she went her own way. And she got into the drug scene. She got into the party scene. And she eventually ended up on the streets as a lady of the night. And one day she's sitting in a, in a flat, a, a one bedroom flat on her own, this mucky flat. And, and a letter comes through the door. She opens it and there in front of her is a picture of her mother. As tears filled her eyes, she turned it over and on the back, this is what it said. I don't care what you've done, I just want you to come home. And that's what God says to every single one of you tonight. It doesn't matter what you've done, it doesn't matter who you are, I just want you to come home. Come to the Saviour who died on a cross for forgiveness. God opens his arms, welcome to anyone who comes. Will you do it? Will you receive this gift? So, salvation is, if I can open this now, this is when I embarrass myself, salvation is a gift, and you don't earn it, you just receive it, and you can refuse a gift, can't you? I'm not going to force this upon uh, Coops, but would you receive this gift of a five? Yeah. There you go, <laughs> 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 you can go press <laughs> yeah. I'm doing it as a gift, and that's what I want you all to think about, it's a gift of salvation, call out to Jesus tonight. And he'll give you that gift gladly. It's his good pleasure to do it.